Today, I'm gonna to go over my first day with the GoPro Hero 9. We are at the three and a half mile marker, just about there. Sun is finally starting to rise. I'm gonna bring this Short run in, it's only gonna be about five and a half miles today. And then, let's hit the bike. I hate hills. Five point three five miles, seven minutes, fifty three seconds per mile, one hundred and fifty one beats per minute today. Getting out there for a little bit of a speedier run today, and then following up that run with an hour on the bike for about eleven point eight miles or so. Getting to use the GoPro Hero Nine for the first time and putting it in action. But this isn't just an action camera this year. GoPro is continuing its trend of introducing more kind of I don't want to say vlog friendly features, but more like everyday user type of features to make it more of like your life camera versus just an action camera. And so I also did take a little bit of vlog type footage for today as well. And we'll get into that. But first, I do want to go over some disclosures. This is a camera that I purchased with my own money. No one's reimbursing me for the purchase price or paying me to make this video. And no one's going to get a chance to preview any of my footage or thoughts before you guys get a chance to see this video on YouTube. Now with the disclosures out of the way, let's talk about the GoPro Hero 9. Now there's a lot of new features that are in here, uh, too many to really talk about. So I'm really gonna focus on the ones that I care about and the two main categories of footage that I like to capture with a GoPro. One's running footage, that's what I do pretty much every day I'm running with a GoPro. Either that or a 360 camera, but a camera uh, to capture running footage pretty much every day sometimes bicycling footage. And I also use it for kind of family vlogs for like home videos. Uh, I have an iPhone 11 Pro. I love using that one as well. But when it comes to taking a lot of videos, I do like using a GoPro anyway. Now, the kinds of features that are gonna make it more useful for the two use cases that I care about, running footage and kind of home videos, is that it's got a front facing camera now. I think that's kind of like the big story, which I think is, Okay, it might be a little bit overrated, but I also think it's gonna make it a lot easier for those people that are looking for kind of an everyday life camera that can also be pretty rugged and handle some adventures. So I do think that's a pretty compelling feature to expand the GoPro user base. Uh, also, the, the screen on the back is a little bit bigger as well, which didn't seem to me like a huge deal, but when it comes to reading through some of the options, and there are a lot of options that you might wanna select from, it makes it a little bit easier to just kind of see all that. The other thing that's new for this year in the GoPro Hero 9 is that you're gonna get 5K 30 frames per second footage, which is pretty amazing. All right, it's a little bit after lunchtime, taking the kiddo out for a little bit of a bike ride. We like to do this little loop around the firehouse here in New Vienna, because uh, there isn't that much traffic. It's relatively flat and the concrete is nice and smooth because this is a brand new firehouse for the volunteer fire department here. But Thought it'd be a good time to kind of, in addition to some of the other kind of vloggy type footage that we have here, 
do a little bit of an audio test. There's zero wind right now, and I'm just walking at a uh, at a brisk pace, following the baby on her bike, and uh, just having some fun in the afternoon. It is hot today, though. I think we're gonna hit the 80s. We might be in there now, even though uh, it's been like super chilly the past couple of mornings. I mean, today wasn't too bad. I think we're in the low 50s, but last couple of days it's been in the 40s. So a very welcome change. I gotta catch up to her now because she's about to hit the turn. Hey. All right, you ready? Come on. I'm ready for you. All right, normally I kind of walk backwards down the hill and I catch her at the bottom just in case the turn's a little too sharp for her and her. I don't, I think she could probably handle it, but with the with the uh, training wheels that she has on the bike, it makes her a little bit unstable. Once she gets rid of the training wheels, I think she'll be able to, come on, go a lot faster, but she likes to have them on for now, so I'm not gonna rush her. All right, keep coming. Go, go, lean, pedal, pedal, pedal. Nice, there you go. Woo! Good work. And then I want to go up there. You want to go up there? It's all gravelly, though. You can go up there if you want, though. Is that where you want to go? All right, let's go. You're also getting more performance at some of those other, like, lesser uh, resolutions as well. For example, the GoPro Hero 8 had 2.7K footage at 120 frames per second, which is pretty amazing. But it only had it available at the wide angle kind of view. Now that 2.7K at 120 frames per second, which enables for super silky slow motion, is available at linear. And to explain kind of like the camera modes, there's like super wide, that's like very fisheye, then there's wide, then there's linear, which has no fish eye whatsoever and then there's narrow it kind of really crops it in and so i like to shoot my footage on my gopros at linear and i have it on a selfie stick and i like the way that that looks i do love fisheye uh footage is not, th not that i'm against fisheye but i just like the way that the gopro with the selfie stick at linear works and now i can use it at 2.7k at that 120 frames per second which is what i need to slow down all my running footage so i'm very excited about that as well the hyper smooth 3.0 uh you know it wasn't that long ago that i just thought that like any kind of digital stabilization was like a non-starter but gopro has proven me wrong every single year since that ever since it came out with hyper smooth version one now we're on version three and uh very excited to also test some of that i'll show you some of that footage and the other main thing is that just overall the battery performance is supposed to be better better cold weather performance which is very useful for me as a winter runner and just a longer bigger battery which is something i'm always very excited about so now that we've seen all the footage that i've collected from the day running cycling making noodles going for a little bike ride with my daughter uh i can kind of like distill my impressions down to a couple of different categories. There's a couple of things that I'm really just amazed by in the GoPro Hero 9. There are a couple of things that I'm a little bit underwhelmed by, and there's other things that I think that I still need to test and I haven't gotten to yet. It's only been one day with this camera, so I think there's a lot of testing that will continue. First, let's get to the things that I'm amazed by. I'm amazed by the HyperSmooth 3.0. Uh, like the footage with me running around with my daughter, chasing her around that parking lot, um, it, it looked gimbal smooth. I, I don't use that, I hate that phrase, but and I don't use it lightly, but it definitely looks like it's mechanically stabilized because I just feel like the footage is so good. That footage was 5K at 30 frames per second with the hyper smooth on. There's a lot of image that the camera can kind of select from in order to make the footage look a little bit better. And I just think it looks so good and I think it's just also usable. Even though I was running after my daughter, for a lot of that footage as well. And while I'm on the topic of that 5K, uh, 30 frames per second linear footage, I think that's amazing as well. I remember, was it the GoPro Hero, I think it was a Hero 5, was the first camera I ever had that had 4K footage. And that camera was 4K at 24 frames per second at super wide. Like you really, you could, you were getting 4K worth of resolution, but you couldn't really like see anything unless it was like way close, like right up close to you because that camera was super wide. The fact that they like came out with this camera 
version, well, like the first version that has 5K resolution, and you can shoot at that. Not wide, super wide, not at wide, but at linear. I think it's just absolutely fantastic. It makes it, like, I was worried that it would have 5K, but it wouldn't be usable for me. But definitely this is something that I can use pretty much all the time. Even in some of the running footage that you saw when I was talking to you guys from the road, that was at that 5K30 in really low light conditions. Um, and so that's another example of that 5K footage that I'm actually really excited about. The other thing that I really like is the 4K60 at that wide angle. Like I said, I do really like uh, wide angle shots. I love fisheye. And I thought that the 4K at 60 looked really smooth. And I'm not sure that we'll do some testing like side by side with the GoPro Hero 8 and the GoPro Hero 9. And it might just be that like this lens is not scuffed up and beat up from a year's worth of use like my GoPro Hero 8 is but I just felt like I was getting really great image quality. I was using the linear with the horizon stabilizing that goes, that's now available uh, in camera at that resolution and frame rate, which I think is pretty cool. And I just think it overall makes for a smoother uh, image capture that translates really well to the screen. So I'm really happy with that as well. And I'm also continually happy with the audio that's coming out of the GoPro. I think that as much as there are other competitors in this action camera market, that maybe they're getting close with the, like the image quality. Uh, I still think that GoPro is setting itself apart in terms of the stabilization that they've been able to achieve. And also the audio, the audio is just so much easier to work with when I'm working with the GoPro versus say like the Insta360 ONE R, which I think is a fantastic camera. The audio is just really difficult to work with at times. And so I think the audio is always like underrated by a lot of people. Good job. Really good. Good work. And so those are the things I was really amazed by. And here are some of the things that I was a little underwhelmed by. The main thing is that I was really underwhelmed by the low light performance. Now there's two different kinds of low light that I took today. I took stuff indoors and the indoor footage I thought was just a little bit grainy, a little bit noisy. And indoors is tough because like it's, it, our eyes see indoors as regular light, but cameras recognize them as being low light environments. And so that's a pretty tough environment to shoot in. There wasn't any lighting external lighting at all it was just whatever natural light was available in the room when i was f shooting some of that vlog footage in the kitchen the other area where i shot with low light was that time when i was on the run where most of i started out the run in pitch black darkness and then the sun rose uh i think really close towards the end right about the time i finished the run that's when the sun actually like crested the horizon and so that is when i was using the 2k footage at 120 frames per second and linear plus the linear with the horizon stabilization so there's like the super wide wide linear linear plus and then narrow so like you're you're cropping in quite a bit um so there i just felt like it was uh a little bit blurry uh, the focus wasn't didn't seem great and like there was just a lot of pixel blur so i wasn't too impressed with it i think there's some tweaking that i can do with it to really dial it in uh, but like out of the box, uh, I, I wasn't super impressed with it. I think maybe the big difference is, and I, I, I wish I had done this today under those lighting conditions, was taken 1080 at 120 frames per second at linear, just which is what I like normally shoot at with my GoPro Hero 8 to see if that would be more in line of what I would expect to get from these kinds of lighting conditions. But that testing will continue. So hopefully it was just user error for me today in terms of like me not being able to get everything that this GoPro Hero 9 could achieve in those kinds of lighting conditions. But those are pretty tough lighting conditions. And there's not, I mean, I'm in rural Iowa. This town has a population of about 600 people. There's no street lights. So everything is, when it's dark, it's really dark around here. I probably did it put, put it in its best possible position to succeed though. So we'll keep trying. We'll, we'll do specific low light tests coming up in the future to see if I can't get that dialed in just a little bit better um the other thing that two things that i'm a little bit underwhelmed with were battery life so there was a lot of talk about it's a bigger battery it's going to do better in cold weather performance today's temps were in the 50s so not really that big an issue in terms of the cold affecting the battery but i also felt like the battery 
didn't really last any much longer than like I would normally experience on my GoPro Hero 8 and it's year old battery. So like I didn't feel like, oh, I had so much extra battery life left from today's footage. I felt like even though I did take a lot of footage today and that would have taken and drained the battery quite a bit, I felt like it got down to a low battery level pretty quick and I had to recharge in the middle of the day. Uh, so all the footage you saw today was not on just one charge. So maybe that's something that I can work on a little bit more. I did not have like my uh, quick capture on. So for part of the day's activities, I was turning on the camera and then, and then hitting the shutter button to record. And then I, I don't think I always turn the power button off. So I think I have to look at that a little bit more critically, a little bit more carefully and specifically to really get my final verdict on that. But so far, I'm not really like noticing that this is like epically long battery life, but we'll keep an eye on that too. The last thing that I'm underwhelmed by is the size of this thing. This is a big camera. It's a lot bigger than the GoPro Hero 8 and it weighs a lot more. I don't know what the exact you know ounces are in terms of weighing more but it's noticeably heavy when you pick it up it feels heavier than it looks uh it's a pretty dense piece of equipment here and i run with mine at the end of a selfie stick that extends and so like any increase in weight gets magnified uh in terms of what it apparently feels like to me holding it at the under end of the stick so i'm a little bit disappointed in that because i think that's the wrong direction for the equipment to be going and I do really like the improvements to it. I'm not sure if it's worth the extra size. It probably is, but I just wish I could have the improvements and also the same size as the last one. Cause I also think the GoPro Hero 8 was bigger than the Hero 7. And I think the seven was bigger than the six, right? I think everyone's, I mean, I'll have to double check on that. But it does seem overall that the GoPro is getting bigger and heavier. And I just don't think that's the right direction. Uh, on a side note, there's some things that I think that uh, I'm not that I'm necessarily underwhelmed by, whelmed by, or overwhelmed, or I guess amazed by. And uh, just I think it falls in the category of things you should know. So one of the things is that on this front screen, it seems to really crop in what you're looking at. This screen is only like a square. If anything, it's like a vertical square as well. And so I'm shooting a wide rectangle, but I'm only seeing like a small portion of it and I'm really cropped in on the center. So like, I'm not sure, I still don't know like where the edges of my shot are and what's like exactly in and what's exactly out. And in terms of how close like I'm framed in, it looks like I'm really tight. I think by zooming in, it kind of makes you sure that you have what you want or not. And then stuff that's like kind of on the outside, like everything that's like right here is outside of the field of view of this viewfinder. And then on the other side, everything that's here and further is outside of view. So now one thing that I've noticed though, as far as using this as a vlogging device, it's nice that they have like the front facing like screen now. And my daughter's was, my daughter was using it too a little bit earlier today. She likes looking at it too. Do you like it that you can see yourself better now? Yeah. So you can see your face. So what the better way to do it would be do it like this. See that? Mm -hmm. That's how you do it. And now you talk to it. And so make sure you can see yourself Hi. in this thing right here. See it? There you uh -huh. go. Say hi, everybody. Hi. Say so today is Tuesday. Today is Tuesday. September 22nd. September 22nd. I'm going to record something. Okay. Also, something really cool we just put up pumpkins and Halloween decorations. See it, guys? One thing is that after a minute, it turns off. Kind of like how like the back screen normally turns off after about a minute of recording. So I think just give it a tap on the back of the screen, it shows back up on the front. The other thing, last thing, is that this now comes with a case. So the box that the GoPro comes in is now a case. It had, it. I wish that it kind of had more like structure inside it. There's something in there that kind of like held like the helmet mount and the bolt and the charging cable and all that. I don't really think that that's a way that I'm gonna like live with this case like on a day-to-day -day basis. So I kind of just pitched that and now I just have like kind of like an empty just case, which is nice because I just put my other cameras in there. So one of the things that I like to do is I like to use koozies as my like 
really cheap camera cover. So I have one, it's my Insta 361R, um, that's in one koozie, and then my here's my GoPro Hero 8 that I could keep in the other koozie, and then both of those cameras will fit really nicely in the case. So if I wanted to, I could put the Hero 9 in there uh, as well, I could fit that in there too. So it's, it's a case, it's GoPro branded, so it's kind of cool. Um, but it's also much more useful than the previous packaging, which was, you know, a lot of waste. So that's a nice thing as well. I'm, I'm glad they're like thinking about things a little bit differently. Pretty cool. Here are some of the things that I also still need to test. I haven't had a chance to test yet. Uh, a big thing that they touted was its photo taking capability. I've never really relied on a GoPro for photographs. And in fact, I've recommended to a lot of people to not rely on their GoPros to take photographs. But now it's a 20 megapixel image that you're gonna get. And with the uh, enhanced capabilities now of the sensor and the lenses, I don't know, it might be something worth checking out. So that's something I'll be testing, the photo quality. I'll be comparing it to my iPhone 11 Pro. Uh, maybe that's a fair fight, maybe it's not, I'm not sure. But those would be kind of like my two options if I'm not bringing like a big camera uh, to take photographs with. So I think that kind of makes sense to me. Uh, the other things that I need to test are like the sketch that you can schedule a capture. So like you can make it so that way like it'll the camera will turn itself on in a certain amount of time. and you can schedule the duration so that way it's not just like a lot of times like if you might have to just turn the camera on and you'll be like ah after a while the battery will die and it'll stop recording you could set it so it only records for like 10 minutes or something like that which could be useful it could be useful and also in a situation where it's like if you're doing a loop and you know you're going to be finishing that loop in like 20 minutes you can set it so that the camera like turns itself on for like 20 minutes for a couple minutes as you're going by it so could be a pretty useful feature. I'm not sure how much I'll use it. The other thing that I will test, which I'm not sure if I'm really gonna test it or not, is the, the time warp feature. I think that's got some improvements to it. It seems like the only time I ever really take a time lapse is when uh, I'm testing GoPro cameras. So I'm not sure if I'll do that. Let me know in the comments if that's something really important to you. Maybe I will also like combine that with the scheduled capture function like two birds with one stone so maybe we'll do that and do like a night time lapse so we'll see so uh those are the things that i currently have on my list to keep testing as well as testing like the gopro hero 9 versus the hero 8 side by side so those are the things that are coming up if there's something that i missed that you have questions about that you want me to test out let me know in the comments down below and uh, i'll make sure to include that in the testing. So those are my thoughts so far on the GoPro Hero 9 after just one day. It's bigger, it does a lot more than it did last year and it's pretty exciting. I'm very happy to be playing with it and I'm looking forward to the new adventures and kind of family home videos that I'll be able to record with it. That's all I have for today everybody. Thanks so much for making it all the way to the end of the video. Hope you guys are staying safe out there on your runs and I'll see you guys in the next one. Yo, what's going on?